Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 45 of the course on statistics and probability. Yes, the last lecture of this particular course. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture I discussed with you the chi square test of goodness or fit. And we applied this concept to the example in which we fitted the binomial distribution to real data. In today's lecture, I will be applying this concept to the case of the Poisson distribution. And as you now see on the slide, the platform manager of an airline's terminal ticket counter wants to determine whether customer arrivals can be modeled by using a Poisson distribution. The manager is especially interested in late night traffic. Accordingly, data for the time period of interest have been collected as follows. Number of arrivals per minute are 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the frequencies are 84, 114, 70, and so on. And the sum of the frequency column is 400. The question is, is the distribution Poisson? Students, let us try to understand this problem. Dekhye, data jo hai, usme aapne dekha ke jo frequencies ka column hai, uska sum hai 400. Aur hamara jo variable hai, that is the number of arrivals per minute. To iska matlab ye hua ke 400 minutes ka data liya gaya and they should have been selected at random if this distribution, if this whole method is to be properly applied. Ab ye jo 400 minutes humne randomly select kiye, unme humne dekha ke per minute uh, how many people are arriving aur wo data aapke saamne hai. As you once again see on the screen, corresponding to the number of arrivals per minute equal to zero, the frequency is 84. Iska matlab kya hua? Ke 84 minutes is kism ke the when we did not have even one person arriving. Similarly, 114 minutes were such when only one person arrived at the counter and 70 were such when there were two persons arriving in that one minute. Students, the question is, is this distribution Poisson? Aapko yaad hai na? जब मैंने आपके साथ Poisson process discuss किया था, तो उसको किस तरह से define किया था? A process where events occur randomly, either over a time scale or over a distance scale. यहाँ पे जाहिर है कि हम time scale की बात कर रहे हैं, and one minute is being regarded as one unit of time. तो हमें जाहिर है हम यही समझ रहे हैं कि Customer arrival jo hai, that is a random process. So we would like to think that this should be, this data should be uh, fitted by a Poisson distribution. If I do want to fit a Poisson distribution to this data, students, what will be the procedure? Aapko yaad hai ke binomial ke case mein humne sabse pehle x bar compute kiya and then we equated x bar to NP n was already known and so p was found using this equation. Ab is particular situation may students the one lone parameter of the Poisson distribution is mu where mu is the mean itself of the Poisson distribution. Ab wohi pehle wali baat ke mu to available nahi hai. Lehaza we will have to uh, replace it by its estimate and that of course is x bar. So, as you now see on the screen, in order to compute x bar, we construct the column of fx, which is the product, obviously, of the x column with the f column. Sigma fx is equal to 800, and dividing by 400, x bar comes out to be equal to 2. Now, the formula of the Poisson probabilities is e raised to minus mu, mu raised to x, over x factorial, but since we have to replace mu by x bar, our formula becomes 
e raised to minus 2, 2 raised to x over x factorial. Applying this formula, students, we obtain the Poisson probabilities as you now see in the third column on the slide in front of you. Aap zahir hai ke x ki values put karenge is formula ke andar, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and you obtain probabilities as 0 0.1353, 0 0.2707 and so on such that the sum of the probabilities is 1. Multiplying the probabilities by 400, the sample size, we obtain the expected frequencies which are 54.12, 108.28 and so on. Students, now that we have computed the expected frequencies, of course, now is the time for us to apply the chi-square test of goodness of fit. We have also seen that we have fit kiya hai humne. Kya ye sahi fit ho raha hai on the observed frequencies? So, as you once again see on the slide, given the column of the observed frequencies OI and the column of the expected frequencies EI, we will be constructing and the column of OI minus EI whole square divided by EI. Adding this last column, chi square comes out to be 78.88 but students please before you go on with the thing please note that we have combined the last four values the last four categories that we have ye humne kyun kiya dekhe hum niche se upar ki taraf combine karna shuru karenge hatta ke hamari expected frequency 5 ya 5 se badi ho jaye if I add 0 0.08 to 0 0.36, the sum is still less than 5. When I add 1.36, the sum is not yet 5. And then when I add 4.80 to the sum of the first three, I obtain 6.60 as the expected frequency. Since I have combined the expected frequencies, I must also combine the observed ones and thus I obtain 24 corresponding to 6.60 and students these are the two numbers that will be used in order to find OI minus EIE and the other quantities in that particular part of the table. Ye sari baat jo mene aapke saath ki students I hope you remember that even in the last lecture I mentioned to you that this is a very basic uh, requirement of this particular test, the chi-square test of goodness of it, that none of the expected frequencies should be less than 5. And therefore, if we do obtain some which are less than 5, then we will add in the manner that I just explained, so that the, uh, the thing that we get ultimately is 5 or more. All right, let us have a look at the slide one more time. The sum of the last column is 78.88 and this particular chi-square statistic follows the chi-square distribution having k minus 1 minus r degrees of freedom where k is the number of categories that we have after having combined any classes that we needed to combine. Therefore, if you count now after having combined the last four, we have seven classes and not ten. Aap dekh rahe hain ki humare paas jo actual data hai, that is from zero to nine or more, aur usse saab se ten classes hain, lekin jab humne combine kar diya, we are left with seven. Therefore, k is equal to seven. All right, k to determine ho gaya. And what is r? You will recall from the last lecture that R is the number of parameters that you estimate from the sample data. As I just said, there is only one parameter of the Poisson distribution, mu, and we are estimating it by x bar. Therefore, R is equal to 1. So, the degrees of freedom for this particular statistic are k minus 1 minus R, that is 7 minus 1 minus 1, that is 5 degrees of freedom. And students, aapko ye bhi yaad hoga 
کہ میں نے آپ کو لاسٹ ٹائم بتایا کہ دس از اے رائٹ ٹیل ٹیسٹ دی انٹائر لیول آف سگنیفیکنس دی انٹائر ایریا ہیز ٹو بی ان دا رائٹ ٹیل تو اگر اس پرٹیکولر سچویشن میں اف وی سیٹ الفا ایکول ٹو زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو فائیو دین وی ول لک ان دا کائی اسکوائر ٹیبل انڈر زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو فائیو اگینسٹ فائیو ڈگریز آف فریڈم اینڈ ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا سلائڈ دا کریٹیکل ویلیو از الیون پوائنٹ زیرو سیون سنس آور کمپیوٹڈ ویلیو is much much larger than 11.07 therefore it is evident that in this particular problem we reject the null hypothesis which said that the fit is good and we conclude that it is not a good fit in fact students ye 78.88 jo hamara result aaya hai it is so much larger than 11.07 that we are inclined to think that it might even be highly significant. آپ کو یاد ہے نا کہ اگر آپ کا لیول آف سگنیفیکنس فائیو پرسینٹ کی بجائے صرف ون پرسینٹ ہو اور اس سے بھی آگے نکل جائے آپ کی کمپیوٹڈ ویلیو دین آف کورس وی سی دیٹ اٹ از ناٹ اونلی جسٹ سگنیفیکنٹ بٹ ہائیلی سگنیفیکنٹ سو آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو انکریج یو ٹو ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا کائی اسکوائر ٹیبل فار فائیو ڈگریز آف فریڈم انڈر ون پرسینٹ الفا and then find out for yourself. All right, the next point I would like to convey to you is, what is the rationale of this uh, point that I said, ke ye wala jo test hai, this will always be the right tail test. Students, aap chi square ke formulae pe gaur ki jay. OIE minus EIE whole square over EIE, and then you add these up. Ye jo OIE minus EIE hai, ye kya cheez hai? It is the difference or the distance between the observed and the expected frequency. Hum unka aapis mein jo fasla hai na, usi ko to judge kar rahe hain. If those uh, distances are small, then their squares will be small. And when you add all those quantities, whatever you do, after that, when you add that thing, wo bhi chota hoga na. Agar wo distances hi bade hain, to zahir hai ki squares bhi bade honge. اور وہ سب کچھ کر کے الٹیمیٹلی جو کچھ ملے گا دیٹ ول آلسو بی ریلیٹیولی بیگ ان فیکٹ ڈونٹ یو سی اسٹوڈنٹس کہ اگر آپ کی ایکسپیکٹیڈ فریکوینسیز آپ کی آبزرو فریکوینسیز کے ساتھ ایگزیکٹ ٹیلی کر جائیں دین او آئی مائنس ای آئی ول بی ایکول ٹو زیرو اور اگر وہ سارے اس طرح سے زیرو ہو جائیں واٹ ول بی کائی اسکوئر ایکول ٹو آبویسلی زیرو سو یعنی یہ تو آئیڈیل سچویشن ہے کہ بھائی آپ کی جو ایکسپیکٹیڈ فریکوینسیز ہیں وہ ایگزیکٹ میچ کر رہی ہیں ود یور آبزرو فریکوینسیز اس سے بہتر فٹ کوئی ہو سکتی آف کورس وی کین ناٹ ایکسپیکٹ سچ این آئیڈیل سچویشن ان دا ریئل لائف ورلڈ ویئر وی ہیو سو مچ رینڈمنیس بٹ آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو ہیو گاٹ دی ایسنس آف دی ہول ڈسکشن دیٹ دا اسمالر دا ویلیو آف کائی اسکوائر the more evidence there is that it is a good fit. Wo to sirf agar large hoga, yani wo discrepancy is large hain, aur is wajah se a chi square has come out to be large. If it is so large that it falls in the tail, the right tail of the distribution, itna zyada wo large ho jai, aur zero se itna dur chala jai, then we say that uh, this is not a good fit and we should reject it's not all right students now let us start the discussion of the chi square test of independence aur aap interested honge ke abhi aap dekhenge ke isme jo formula hai that is quite similar to the one that we just had and actually this can also be regarded as a kind of chi square test of goodness or fit chaliye dekhte hain let me explain this concept with the help of an example A random sample of 250 men and 250 women were polled as to their desire concerning the ownership of personal computers. The following data resulted. Now you are seeing that you have a bivariate table hai, jis mein in the top row you have the men and the women and in the first column you have 
the two situations. Either they want to own a PC or they don't want a PC. Now the figures in the body of the table are 120, 130, 80 and 170. आप देख रहे हैं कि 250 मर्दों में से 120 चाहते हैं कि उनके पास पर्सनल कंप्यूटर हो जबकि खवातीन जो 250 हमने चूज की उनमें से 80 are of this type we would like to test the hypothesis that the desire to own a pc is independent of the sex of the person and we would like to conduct this test at the 5% level of significance. This test involves exactly the same kind of a pattern as we have had before. The first step is the formulation of the null and the alternative hypotheses and the null hypothesis students in any such situation will always be that the two variables of classification are independent whereas the alternative hypothesis would always be that the two variables of classification are not independent. Students, ye jo maine aapko null or alternative hypothesis diye, um, the underlying mathematics of this procedure is such that as you know, we always begin by assuming that H0 is true. To isme agar hum H0 ye rakhe, that the two variables of classification are independent, तो फिर आगे हम सारे जो स्टेप्स हैं इस हिपोथेसिस के अंडर कंडक्ट करेंगे और उसी सूरत में हमारी एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रीक्वेंसीज और हमारा काय स्क्वायर उस तरीके से कंप्यूट होगा जिस तरीके से कंप्यूट किया जाना चाहिए इस किस्म के टेस्टिंग के अंदर ऑलराइट आफ्टर हैविंग सेट द हिपोथेसीज ऑफ कोर्स द सेकंड स्टेप इज द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस and we can, as usual, set it at 5%. The third step is the test statistic. And as you now see on the screen, the test statistic in this situation is chi squared is equal to sigma sigma oij minus eij whole square over eij. And please note that the first summation is over i and the second is over J. Students, I told you that the pattern is very similar hai to the one that we had before. The uh, difference is that we are saying that we have sigma sigma oij minus, but um, this oij is oij, I am not Punjabi. I am saying it in English. And why is it that we have a double summation, students? The reason is that as you know, in this case, we have a bivariate table. So, I represents rows and J represents the columns. Or wo sab kuch karke humne jo sum nikalna hai na, that is over all the values and therefore we have the double summation. All right, what is the next step? Of course, the fourth step is to compute our test statistic. To iske liye students, पहले हमें EIJ जो के इस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम में there are four E11, E12, E21 and E22. These have to be computed. And as you now see on the slide, E11 that is the expected frequency of the first cell, the cell lying in the first row as well as the first column. Students, this expected frequency E11 is obtained by multiplying the marginal total directly to the right of this cell by the marginal total directly below this cell and dividing this product by the grand total 500. Hence, E11 is equal to 200 into 250 over 500 and that is equal to 100. Students, ye jo formula hai na, this is according to what we learned uh, quite a few lectures ago, that if two events A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A into the probability of B. 
उसी की एक मॉडिफाइड फॉर्म आपने अभी इस्तेमाल की एंड दिस इज द वे यू विल कंप्यूट ऑल दी एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रीक्वेंसीज मैं फिर रिपीट करती हूँ जिस सेल की एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रीक्वेंसी चाहिए उसके सामने वाला टोटल उसके नीचे वाले टोटल से मल्टीप्लाई कर दीजिए एंड डिवाइड दिस प्रोडक्ट बाय द ग्रैंड टोटल ऑफ ऑल द ऑब्जर्वेशन नेक्स्ट ऑफकोर्स वी विल कंस्ट्रैक्ट द कॉलम्स ऑफ ओ आई जे माइनस ई आई जे एंड द स्क्वेर एंड सो ऑन एंड हेंस एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड कंस्ट्रक्टिंग ऑल दोज कॉलम्स का स्क्वेयर कम्स आउट टू बी थर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री स्टूडेंट्स ये जो कॉलम्स हमने बनाए हैं ये अब आपकी अपनी मर्जी है कि आप किस ऑर्डर में ओ आई जे की वैल्यूज इस कॉलम में लिखे बट द ओनली थिंग दैट यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड इज दैट विच एवर ऑर्डर यू चूज फॉर द ओ आई जे द सेम ऑर्डर मस्ट बी मेनटेन्ड फॉर ई आई जे स्टूडेंट्स वॉट इज द फिफ्थ स्टेप ऑफ एनी हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग प्रोसीजर द क्रिटिकल रीजन नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन इट कैन बी मैथमेटिकली शोन that this particular statistic chi square follows the chi square distribution having r minus 1 into c minus 1 degrees of freedom where r is the number of rows and c is the number of columns is particular example me r is equal to 2 and c is also equal to 2 therefore we have 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 degrees of freedom that is 1 degree of freedom so um looking at the chi square table against 1 degree of freedom under 0.05 we obtain as you now see on the slide 3.84 as the critical value the last step is the conclusion and since our computed value 13.33 is larger than 3.84 therefore we reject h not students hamara null hypothesis is kya tha that the two variables of classification are independent yani the sex of the person and the desire to own a personal computer these are independent koya uski jo sex hai usse is baat ka koi taluq nahi hai ki usko personal computer chahiye ki nahi lekin we have rejected this hypothesis that means that we are saying that the two variables of classification are associated to phir naturally sawal paida hota hai ki phir kaun sa kaun si gender hai jisme it is a higher proportion of persons who would like to have a personal computer agar taluq hai sex ka is cheez ke sath to phir to hame isko study karna chahiye na ki kis category mein um, this thing is more uh, prevalent so let us have a look at the data once again as you now see on the slide out of the 250 men 120 are such who would like to have a pc whereas out of the 250 women only 80 are of this type now since our chi square has come out to be significant therefore we can say that this difference that we can see in the data this uh, indicates a significantly higher proportion of men wanting to have a personal computer as compared with women students with reference to the chi square always keep in mind the very important point that for both the chi square test of goodness of fit and the chi square test of independence the number of observations in our sample should be at least 50 otherwise this procedure of hypothesis testing will not be suitable students ye jo uh, example humne kiya this was the simplest case when our bivariate table which is technically called a contingency table it was only a 2 by 2 table sirf do rows or do columns but of course we can apply this procedure when we have more than two rows or more than two columns so let us consider one more example as you now see on the screen 
A national survey was conducted in a country to obtain information regarding the smoking patterns of the adult males by marital status. A random sample of 1,772 citizens, 18 years old and over, yielded the following data. Now, students, you can see that we have four categories for marital status, single, married, widowed, and divorced. And we have three categories for smoking pattern. Total abstinence, yani bilkul nahi peete, um, only at times, kabhi kabar, and regular smoker. We would like to use this data to decide whether there is an association between marital status and smoking pattern. Students, all right, I would like to throw this as a challenge to you. Aap ye test khud conduct kije. The steps are absolutely similar to the ones that we just did. So please conduct it yourself and find out whether there is an association between the marital status and the smoking pattern or whether you do not find such an association and you accept the null hypothesis that the two variables of classification in this case are independent students. discussion This is to determine whether or not there is an association between two qualitative variables. Jesse sex of the person and whether or not he or she wants to own a, a personal computer, obviously these are qualitative variables. Agar humne uh, quantitative variables ke darmiyan aap isme relationship malum karni ho, to hum kya karenge? You will recall lecture number 15 in which I discussed with you in detail the concepts of regression and correlation. Students, wahan jo humne R ki baat ki thi or uh, regression line fit ki thi, that was in the area of uh, descriptive statistics. But then we also have methods by which we can do inferential statistics regarding regression and correlation. We can test hypotheses about rho, the population correlation coefficient, and beta, the population regression coefficient. Jo hamare paas hote hain, R or B, they are of course the sample values. But um, we would not have a chance to discuss those in detail in this particular course. QK students, agar hum is tarah se dekhe, to is tarah se to abhi aur bhi bohat si cheeze hain which could be discussed. But the basic purpose of the course is to give you uh, an insight into the fundamentals of the subject. And um, I think that what we have done up till now uh, would suffice for that, inshallah. All right, this brings us to the end of the series of topics that I wanted to convey to you in some detail in this course. For the remaining part of today's lecture, students, I will be conveying to you uh, a few very, very interesting points, the very first of which is the degrees of freedom. Aapko yaad hai na, ke T distribution, chi square distribution, or F distribution ki discussion ke vakt, humne degrees of freedom ki baat ki thi, and I said to you that the parameters that exist in the mathematical equations of those distributions, they are called degrees of freedom. Magar sawal hi paida hota hai ke why on earth are they called degrees of freedom? What do we mean by that? Let me try to explain this to you with the help of uh, an il illustration. Ye pencil jo hai. Agar aap ek plane consider kare, aur uske andar isko ek line segment tasavur kare, aur uske baad ye dekhen ke ye wala jo iska kona hai, agar mene isko yahan pe fix kar diya, this thing is still free to move in this plane. It can be rotated and ek taraf se restriction hai, but otherwise it can move. So we have one degree of freedom. Students, agar main dono points ko fix kar dun, now I do not have any degree of freedom for the movement of this pencil or the line segment. But if we step into the three-dimensional world, the one that you and I live in, phir aap note karenge ki ye jo plane, ye pura jo plane hai na, jiske andar ye fixed hai, this plane itself is able to move 
in this three-dimensional world. And in the three dimensions, I do have one degree of freedom. So this is the kind of concept that is involved in this discussion. Now, coming to our statistical work, you um, remember that we testing ki thi H0 mu is equal to something against H alternative that mu is not equal to that quantity. And if we were using the T test, we said that the T statistic X bar minus mu naught over S over square root of N follows the T distribution having N minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, ye N minus 1 Q um, Let me explain this with the help of, a, of an example, which you now see on the slide. Suppose that we have a sample of size N equal to 6 and suppose that the sum of the sample values is 20. That is, we have the following situation. A table aapke saamne hai, jis mein pehla column jo hai, that is giving you the serial number of the six values that you have. And as I just said, the sum of the values is 20. Now students, note ki jiye, ke is situation mein, pehli jo paanch values hai, you may choose them freely, but once you have chosen the first five, you are not free to choose the sixth one. Isliye, because the sum is 20. Agar pehli paanch values aap freely choose kar le, aur unko choose karne ke baad, aapka un pehli paanch values ka jo sum hai na, that comes out to be 17. To phir, la muhala, sixth value, has to be equal to 3. Hence, we do not have 6 degrees of freedom to choose values, but we do have 6 minus 1, that is 5 degrees of freedom. So, dekha aapne, students, it's quite an interesting concept. Isi baat ko ek aur tarah se samajhne ki koshish karte hain. Alright, I have 6 observations. I find their sum. And then I throw away one of those six. Students, I can regenerate that one that I have thrown away because I already know the sum and I know I have the other five values. So, degrees of freedom, Johanna, they are six minus one. Wo ek jo mein regenerate kar sakti hun, um, that is the one for which I do not have the dig, uh, degree of freedom. Uh, that that can also be chosen freely. Wo to un baki paanch values se hi regenerate ho jayegi. So this is the kind of concept why we say that we are dealing with degrees of freedom. Coming back to the T distribution, the chi-square distribution, the F distribution, students, generally we can define degrees of freedom in this manner that the degrees of freedom are the total number of observations in our sample minus the number of parameters that you estimate from the sample data. Ye jo T distribution ki baat hai, yehi kar lete hai sabse pehle. As you now see on the slide, in testing H0, mu is equal to mu0 against H alternative, that mu is not equal to mu0, our statistic X bar minus mu0 over S over square root of N follows the T distribution having n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Here, the point to be noted is that S is the estimate of sigma, the population standard deviation. Goya, hum, ek parameter jo hai population ka, that is the standard deviation, usko hum estimate kar rahe hai by the sample standard deviation small s. Chunke hum ek parameter Chahe aap usko standard deviation keh lijiye ya population variance keh lijiye. Chunke ye ek parameter estimate kiya ja raha hai from the sample data. Therefore, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. Isi tarah f statistic ki baat kar lete hain. You will recall that when we were trying to test H0, sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square. Our test statistic was f is equal to 
एस वन स्क्वेयर ओवर एस टू स्क्वेयर और हमने कहा था कि ये स्टेटिस्टिक एन वन माइनस वन कॉमा एन टू माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम वाली एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन को फॉलो करता है वाई डू वी हैव एन वन माइनस वन बिकॉज एस वन स्क्वेयर दैट वी हैव इन द न्यूमरेटर इज एन एस्टिमेटर ऑफ सिगमा वन स्क्वेयर तो हमने गोया एक पैरामीटर एस्टिमेट किया एंड हेंस एन वन माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम फॉर द न्यूमरेटर एंड सिमिलर सिचुएशन होल्ड्स फॉर द डिनोमिनेटर और जो अभी हमने थोड़ी देर पहले काय स्क्वेयर टेस्ट ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस कंडक्ट किया उसमें तो बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग सिचुएशन है आई सेट टू यू दैट वी हैव आर माइनस वन इन टू सी माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम तो ये किस तरह से हो गया वो जो एग्जाम्पल था कि जिसमें आइदर मैन और वुमन एंड आइदर यू वॉन्ट अ पी सी और यू डोंट वॉन्ट अ पी सी तो उसमें टू रोज एंड टू कॉलम्स एंड दे फॉर वी हैव टू माइनस वन इन टू टू माइनस वन दैट इज वन इन टू वन एंड दैट इज वन डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम ये कैसे हुआ लेट इस लुक एट दैट टेबल वंस अगेन नाउ आई एम प्रजेंटिंग टू यू द सेम टेबल इन सच वे दैट आई डू हैव information regarding the marginal totals and the grand total but i have removed the four data values that i had in the body of the table for example suppose that the value of a cell is 100 then automatically the value in the second cell of the top row will also be 100 because the sum of the row is 200 and the value in the second cell of the first column will be 150 because the sum of that column is 250 and then of course we can also find the value in the last cell that is the cell in the second row and the second column to lubbe lubab ye students that you can choose only one value freely बाकी तीनों की तीनों जो है ना वो तो उन मार्जिनल टोटल्स की वजह से डिटरमिन हो जाएंगी आप फ्रीली चूज नहीं कर सकते दी ओनली वन दैट यू कैन चूज फ्रीली दैट मे बी इन द फर्स्ट सेल और इन द सेकेंड और थर्ड और फोर्थ उससे फर्क नहीं पड़ता द पॉइंट टू नोट इज दैट यू हैव ओनली वन डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम एंड वन कैन बी रिटर्न एज वन इंटू वन एंड दैट कैन बी रिटर्न एज टू माइनस वन इंटू टू माइनस वन in other words r minus 1 into c minus 1 of course if you have a 2 by 3 table or a 3 by 4 table to yahi baat jo maine present ki it will be in that context aur main aapko encourage karungi ki aap ek 2 by 3 table banaye aur marginal total likh le aur uske baad khud uh, is pe work kare ke aaya ye jo formula hai आर माइनस वन इंटू सी माइनस वन वाला है जो कि उस केस में टू माइनस वन इंटू थ्री माइनस वन यानी वन इंटू टू यानी टू डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम के मुतरद होगा क्या वाकई उस टेबल में विच हैज टू रोज एंड थ्री कॉलम्स डू यू रियली हैव ओनली टू डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इस पर आप खुद वर्क कीजिए और राइट स्टूडेंट्स द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज दैट ऑफ द पी वैल्यू आपने देखा कि हमने बहुत सारे हिपोथिस टेस्ट किए वी डिस्कस वेरियस प्रोसीजर्स बट इन एवरी सिचुएशन वॉट वी वर डूइंग वॉज दैट वी डिटर्मिन द क्रिटिकल रीजन एंड वी डिसाइडेड वेदर आवर कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू फॉल्स इन द एक्सेप्टेंस रीजन और इन द क्रिटिकल रीजन बट स्टूडेंट्स वी कैन ऑल्सो ड्रॉ अ कंक्लूजन रिगार्डिंग आवर hypothesis by means of what is called the p value as you now see on the slide the probability of observing a sample value as extreme as or more extreme than the value that has been observed given that the null hypothesis is, is true this probability is called the p value students i would like to explain this to you with the help of the example in which we considered 
the hourly wages of computer analysts and registered nurses. As you will recall, the statement of the example was a survey conducted by a market research organization five years ago showed that the estimated hourly wage for temporary computer analysts was essentially the same as the hourly wage for registered nurses. This year, a random sample of 32 temporary computer analysts from across the country is taken. The analysts are contacted by telephone and asked what rates they are currently able to obtain in the marketplace. A similar random sample of 34 registered nurses is taken and the resulting wage figures are listed in the following table. As you can see, the wages are 24.10, 23.75 and so on for the computer analysts and similar figures for registered nurses. We would like to conduct a hypothesis test at the 2% level of significance to determine whether the hourly wages of the computer analysts are still the same as those of the registered nurses. Students, you will recall that our null hypothesis was mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0 against the alternative that mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to 0. We carried out various steps and the computed value of our test statistic came out to be 3.43 which was greater than the tabulated value, the critical value 2.33. Hence, we rejected H0. The figure that you now see on the screen illustrates this point. Aap dekh rahe hain ke hamari value 3.43 jo hai, that is lying in the right tail of the sampling distribution and it is to the right of 2.33 and therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Students, ye jo result humne obtain kiya, we could also have got the same result by the p-value method. Ab p-value kya chiz hai? Sabse pehla step jo hai, wo ye hai, ke aap compute ki jiye how much area lies to the right of our computed value. So, as you now see on the slide, the value 3.43 in the right tail of the standard normal distribution is in front of you and as you can see the area beyond this point is 0 0.0004. Of course, we get this area by looking up the area table of the standard normal distribution. Now, since this is a two-tailed test, therefore, we are interested not only in this area which is on the right tail, but also the area which is to the left of minus 3.43. And obviously, that is also equal to 0 0.0004. Students, in this situation, the p-value is given by 0 0.0004 plus 0 0.0004, and that is equal to 0.0008. Yani, humne is baat ki probability compute ki hai students ke humari jo value actually a gai utni badi value ya usse bhi zyada badi value aur chukhe ye two tail test hai to saath hi hum kahenge ke uska jo negative uh, counterpart hai utni choti value ya usse bhi zyada choti value होने की प्रोबेबिलिटी कितनी के इस बात की प्रोबेबिलिटी कितनी थी के हमारी वैल्यू इत, इतनी एक्सट्रीम पे होती एंड वी हैव फाउंड दैट इट इज ओनली 0.0008 नाउ सिंस दिस इज एक्सट्रीमली स्मॉल एंड मच स्मॉलर देन द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस दैट इज 2% इन दिस प्रॉब्लम Therefore, we reject H0. Students, we always begin by assuming that H0 is true. Point here is that if H0 is such, 
तो फिर इतनी एक्सट्रीम वैल्यू आने की प्रॉबिलिटी क्या है जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 एट इट इज हाईली इम्प्रॉबेबल सो इफ वी हैव सच अ लो प्रॉबिलिटी फॉर गेटिंग दिस वैल्यू दैट वीव एक्चुअली गॉड देन वी से दैट देर इज समथिंग रॉन्ग एंड वी के नॉट एक्सेप्ट दल हिपोथिस इन दिस सिचुएशन सो दे फोर वी विल रिजेक्ट इट आई वुड लाइक टू इनकरेज यू to work on this problem on your own aap bahut se examples lijiye unki p values compute kijiye aur yaad rakhiye ki agar one tail test hai to fir aap dono tails ke areas ko add nahi karenge you will simply take the area in that one tail hamesha aap compute karenge the area beyond that value which you have actually got as your computed value of your test statistic and once you have computed it uske baad aapne sirf ye dekhna hai Okay, is that large or is it small? As you can now see on the slide, the p-value is a property of your data, and it indicates how improbable your obtained result really is. So, if it is a very very small figure, then we say that this result is very improbable under the null hypothesis, and therefore. we reject h not a very simple way of um, understanding what interpretation to make is that if your p value is less than the level of significance then you will reject h not and if it is greater then you would accept h not but i would like to encourage you to work on this problem on your own and to study quite a few textbooks and other books in this regard what i would like to now discuss with you students is the relationship between interval estimation and hypothesis testing students shayad aapke apne zehen mein ye baat aayi ho that there seems to be a relationship between interval estimation and hypothesis testing after all do you not remember that when we derived the confidence interval for mu humne darmiyan mein area rakha tha 1 minus alpha इस साइड पे अल्फा बाई टू और दूसरी साइड पे भी अल्फा बाई टू एंड वेन वी डेड हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग इन केस ऑफ अ टू टेल टेस्ट इफ आवर लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस इज अल्फा देन वी हैव अल्फा बाई टू एरिया ऑन दिस साइड एंड अल्फा बाई टू ऑन दी अदर साइड दे डेफिनेटली डज सीम टू बी सम काइंड ऑफ अ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द टू सो लेट मी थ्रो अ प्रोपोजिशन टू यू एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड let l comma u be the 95% confidence interval for the parameter theta where l stands for the lower limit and u for the upper limit of the interval then we will accept the null hypothesis h not theta is equal to theta not against h1 theta is unequal to theta not at 5% level of significance if theta not falls inside the confidence interval but if theta not falls outside the interval l u then we will reject h not in the language of hypothesis testing the 95% confidence interval is known as the acceptance region and the region outside the confidence interval is called the rejection region also uh, in this way we can say that the end points of the confidence interval represent the critical values students ye ek proposition maine aapke samne present ki hai i would like you to work on this on your own aap ek sampling distribution lijiye uske upar इंटरवल डिराइव कीजिए और हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग के हवाले से उसी के ऊपर क्रिटिकल वैल्यूज डिटर्मिन कीजिए और खुद कोशिश कीजिए कि आप देख सकें कि वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ रिलेशनशिप एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन इंटरवल एस्टिमेशन एंड हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग यू माइट अराइव एट द कंक्लूजन दैट वॉट वॉज जस्ट प्रजेंटेड इज करेक्ट और यू माइट arrive at something slightly different 
So that is a challenge for you. Students, we are drawing close to the end of today's lecture and to the end of this course. But before I close, I would like to convey to you that statistics is a vast discipline. In this course, I have presented to you some of the very basic and fundamental concepts. But of course, there are numerous other concepts that could be discussed. Um, for example, with reference to experimental design, we could talk about the Latin square design, factorial designs, and so many other very interesting and important designs. With reference to um, statistical inference students, uh, we could have talked about non-parametric statistics, non-parametric inference, and in a similar way, there are so many other topics that we could talk about. This particular course should be regarded as the beginning of a long journey in the science of statistics. And if you are interested, you would definitely want to pursue studies in this area at some stage or the other. Another very interesting and important point, students, that I would like to convey to you is that I have uh, presented so many different problems and so many different techniques. And most of the time, I have been um, presenting to you the solutions of the problems step by step in a lot of detail. The purpose was to give you an idea of the fundamental concept involved in that particular technique. But having said this, students, I would now like to convey to you that there are numerous computer packages that you can use and you can arrive at the solution within seconds. Aap to computer science ke students hai. Aap se zyada behtar ye baat kaun jaan sakta hai. And the packages um, are numerous, as I said. SPSS, SAS, Stata, S+, Minitab, and so on and so forth. So I would like to encourage you to attempt quite a few problems on these packages. That you will simply be clicking a button and you will be um, arriving at all your regression coefficients and all kinds of things that you would like to do. And speaking of latest trends, students, I would now like to give to you one of the latest definitions of statistics. Statistics is a science of decision making for governing the state affairs. It collects, analyzes, manages, monitors, interprets, evaluates, and validates information. Statistics is information science, and information science is statistics. It is an applicable science as its tools are applied to all sciences including humanities and social sciences. And students, at this point, I would like to repeat what I said in the very first lecture of this course. It has been said that statistical thinking will one day be as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write. Yes. This is the importance of statistics. Students, education is a wholesome process. The essence of effective teaching is effective and inspiring communication on the part of the teacher and concentrated attention and effort on the part of the student. As far as the teacher is concerned, Shair Kelfazmi, Teaching is tarah ki honi chahiye ke kaha jaye ke dekhna taqreer ki lazzat ke jo usne kaha dekhna taqreer ki lazzat ke jo usne kaha maine yun jana ke goya ye bhi mere dil mein hai and as far as students responsibility is concerned as I said 
it is concentrated attention and a lot of effort. Jaisa ke qaid azam ne kaha, kaam, kaam, or sirf kaam. Students, if this course has been able to inculcate in you the fundamentals of statistical and probabilistic thinking, then it has served its purpose. I wish you the very best in your pursuit of knowledge. May Allah bless you with the wealth of knowledge and with the capability to utilize this knowledge for the betterment of humanity. Salihan Akhmi ko ijazat Allah Hafiz.